Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about the BRICS PLC serial communication and in particular we'll be looking at an example of Modbus RTU to, to the solo process temperature controller. So what you'll see is currently right now I have my BRICS PLC here, my serial communication and it's connected to my solo uh, temperature controller model 4896 and I have I'm currently connected to my uh, do more designer software through my USB link which is located right here and we're communicating currently right now we are in program mode so serial communication really allows us to talk to from any intelligent device to another and on this picture here what you'll see is I do have a barcode scanner that reads uh, ASCII characters back into my serial port and that's really what uh, it's a simple smart device talking to uh, uh, another device and that's the way we uh, communicate serially just means that we have a master and a slave so usually it's a one-on-one -on -one communication so in our particular case um, or in this case this photo we have a barcode scanner which sends ASCII characters out and back into our serial port the next one is our ASCII output, so we can actually output uh, ASCII characters back into display signs, such as uh, this marquee that we see right here, just indicating that the conveyor has jammed up. So the wiring between our Solo and our, our um, RS-485, which is our serial communication that we're going to be using, um, is just a two wire. So we have our uh, negative wire goes to our negative side and our positive wire goes to our positive wire wire goes to the positive side. The signal ground is just the, the shielding of your cable that you connect them to. In my particular case I do not have one. So you'll notice that with the BRICS PLC our RS-232 port is actually a 232 or 45 and we can turn on and off the termination resistance on that 45 network at will. So the next thing we want to do is take a look at the parameters within the solo uh, process temperature controller. And you'll see here, currently right now, we're in operation mode. And if we set, hit and hold the set for more than three seconds, we go into the initial setting mode in which we can then find our parameters. When we're done the initial setting parameters, then we can hit the set, which goes back to our operating mode. So that's exactly how everything works. So it's all goes by the set instruction and to change values you get the um, the other uh, symbol right here that we go if we can scroll through. So let's go ahead and go into our, um, our initial setting mode. Hit it, hold it for three seconds and right now it comes up. We have a J-type thermocouple that it displays right now. So if we um, look at the parameters we're looking for, we have this first one, online configuration it's called, and what we want to do is allow that to be on so that we can start communicating to our controller. So we'll scroll down, go through it until we see that uh, symbol, which is right there, and sure enough it is on right now. Which is good that's what we, exactly what we want now our next parameter is our modbus communication and we're going to be setting it from modbus rtu um, which is our serial link and that's what it's set for and next is our network address now as i said before um, we can um, have uh, a master slave that's usually one to one Modbus is actually a protocol that allows us uh, multiple units to one unit. So this means that I could have uh, up to uh, 32 solo temperature controllers going back to my BRICS PLC and I can control all those parameters I want with that. And so when, we talk in, when we're talking Modbus RTU, we're talking that is the protocol or the communication language that we set between the PLC and the device that we're trying to quote control. In our case here, it's a solo uh, process temperature controller. So that's our network address. Next, 
we have all of our parameters that we do for communication. Now these parameters are important to note because we must match them on our Bricks PLC in order to communicate. So there's unit number one. We have 9600 baud. This is actually the speed at which it communicates. We have the length, which is eight, which is eight bits length that we send back and receive. This is the parity, which is even. What this really means is that as we send out information, it checks the on off status of the bits. And it either could be even, odd, or none. So we're not looking for any parity. So in our case here, it's even. And the last parameter is one stop bit. So we'd make a note of all of those settings and then we can go back to our main um, monitoring. So all of our solos now been uh, uh, programmed. Everything looks good there. We've got our wiring together. So now we have to look at our Bricks PLC. Now currently right now we are in uh, program mode. So we'll take a look at our configuration first. And under our configuration, uh, system configuration, you'll see at the very top here, CPU configuration, which comes up. And what we'll see is our serial port configuration. Under protocol, we look down and we have it set for Modbus RTU client. Now that is actually in brackets master. This means that the PLC will initiate all of the commands to our our server or our slave unit and our port type you notice that we can have either 232 or 485 in our particular case this is a 485 connection so we can select 485 and we enable our 120 ohm resistance now we can look at our settings for our RTU client master and they're right here. So there's all my Modbus communication, my timeout, my retries, my package if I lose communication. Now, this is very important, our, our port settings. Our baud rate, 9600. Data bits are eight, stop bits one. And the parity is even. So they must match exactly as what I had in my solo when I went through it. So we'll set okay for that. And okay for our configuration. Now what you'll notice though is under my configuration, if I just want to talk ASCII directly or have custom protocols coming back and forth with the bricks, all I have to do is then turn this on, adjust my parameters, and then use the stream in and stream out. Uh, so it's similar in nature of exactly what we are doing right now. So in our case, Modbus RTU client, and it's set for uh, that already, so we'll say okay. Now, if we look at our actual instruction, the first instruction that we have here is a Modbus network read. And we can look at the instruction here. Let's unpin that. And we go to protocol. We have some checksums. We have package streaming in and streaming out. That is when we will use um, strict, strictly ASCII. But since we have standard protocols we're going to use Modbus read and Modbus write in order to write and read back to the solo uh, process temperature controller. So let's just uh, close that structure set down and under my um, Modbus read we'll double click it we will actually look at um, the instruction itself we have a serial Modbus client read that's our device. Our unit number that we set with our solo is number one. We're going to read holding registers and the address in which we're going to start is um, 404097. Now this is in the manual of the solo temperature controller where you can find the uh, present value or the PV value of the controller itself. And then we set the number of Modbus registers which is one. And then we set the do more memory or our Burks memory as V1, V0, which we're going to store our present value or our, our, um, our value that the solo is currently reading. And we're going to enable that once on the leading edge. And we're going to set a couple of bits here. And these bits, if we successfully read uh, our Modbus network, we're going to set C1. And if we have an error, we're going to set C2. 
So that is that is all the instructions that we have um, are set up for now a read of our Modbus. And then you'll notice here that we can also put an exception response if we want. And that will allow us, if we have an error, to actually have a code with that error to tell us exactly what went wrong. So remember, it's set C1 and C, uh, C2 as our commands if that read is successful. So the other conditions outside here is we have a first scan flag. So our first scan flag will will trigger this instruction. And this instruction has this little triangle. That means it's done on the leading edge. So once I see that, it's gonna send that information out. And then we have our, our uh, Modbus network write success and error flags here. So on the first scan, the, the PC or PLC powers up. We have our first scan flag. It sends out my read instruction, my uh, C1 and C2 are set whether I get a good command or not and that sets my the success which then goes into my write network and then if I look at my write again it's similar to my read but in this case here I'm, my unit number is one again I'm going to use the function code write single register my Modbus address is 404098 which is actually again in the um, solo process temperature controller manual and then we have um, we're going to from the do more we're going to take the information out of v1 and write that to this location or this register in our solo which then will change the set value or sv value of that controller and then what we go um, do more range it's continuous on power flow and then we, on success, we set um, C3, and on an error, we set C4, and once again, we can set our exception uh, bit flags if we wish. So that is it for the programming. So if I take this, and now we um, turn this into uh, run mode. Now we're running our application. I've got my data monitor up here, and V0 again is our read instruction. And what we do is we turn the status on so you can see things turning on and off. So V0 is actually my uh, read instruction and it's saying I have the value of uh, 21 degrees C currently in my controller, which is exactly right. It's right here. You'll also notice that when we turned it on, we have our transmit and receive lights. They are um, on almost solid but literally they are turning on off so quickly that it looks like it's solid so the other thing we can do is currently right now our our present set our set point value is actually uh, 100 so let's change that and we'll put in 15.0 uh, we'll write that to the controller you can see how quickly now our controller changed to the set value of 15. And the other thing here is if I come down and you'll see that I have my um, thermocouple. If I just hold on to my thermocouple, my temperature then should start rising up. And that's exactly what it does. You can see the response from my screen and the data value that my response is very quick coming in and out. Now obviously with more things on the network that'll actually change and it'll slow down somewhat a little bit but um, still the response time is very good for this controller and the way we communicate here on Modbus. All right that's it for now. Now all the links and documentation that we talked about can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. Now if you like this video and like to see more there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video, or you can go to accautomation.ca and, and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Now that's it for now. Thanks for watching.